Hi, my name is Jimmy Williams with NFL Draft Diamonds. And I have a diamond in the rough for you guys to meet today. His name is Armani Webster. He is a defensive back out of Nebraska, Kearney. Uh, nice to have you on, sir. Thank you for having me. So uh, the the lopers, the antelopers there for, for Kearney. So um, one of the things that really drew me to you, uh, buddy, quite honestly, is your size. You are a, a really nice-sized uh, defensive back. Um, over six foot one, um, almost 34 inch arms, which I think really sets you apart as a prospect. Um, but uh, I do want to kind of do a deep dive into who you are, man. So um, start us out from the beginning. Tell us where you're from and uh, start us out in this journey. Uh, so, yeah, I'm from Chicago, Illinois, born and raised. Pretty much been there all my life. Went to high school there. Um, yeah, it was uh football journey kind of just started like my soft, yeah like my sophomore year of high school that's when I really started to get into like organized football and stuff like that and then from that point on we kind of just got obsessed with it gotcha so what was that your earliest memory of being a football player is like your sophomore year or did you play earlier or, or what no that was like that's that's like legit legit the the start of my career is my sophomore year of high school. So it was like, cause I was never really like growing up. It wasn't football, like football and sports in general, which just wasn't on my radar when I was growing up. Like it just wasn't something that I was truly interested in. But like, as I was getting ready to go to high school, I had a bunch of neighborhood friends. I had a bunch of, um, you know, some of the adults around just, keep you know throwing it out there pitching it out there to me like maybe you should play sports maybe you should you know play a little football here and there because we played I mean we played on the like you know on the streets and the grass right, and right. stuff like that but nothing crazy yeah. nothing like official well I mean certainly um drew the eyes of their uh you know for the you know coaches and uh you know at your school um but I do want to kind of you know dive back into like your time there uh in high school uh, Chicago Tech Academy uh, there uh, did a little bit of basketball, um, but again, uh, you were a, a defensive back uh, there. So uh, what do you remember most about your time as an athlete in high school? Most is probably just like, uh, just uh, just being with my teammates, honestly, like, in high school, it's it's real easy to like forget. Though actually, it's very easy to like remember that it's a game. Like you don't really get as much pressure to like perform. You kind of just out there, and you and when most of your team is made out of people you've like spent classes with all day long, and you know hang out with outside of school, it just makes it just another thing to do. It makes it fun. So I think just the memories of just being around with the guys. Sure. So. um you're there. I mean, I feel like a lot of guys growing up in the Chicago area, you're either basketball, baseball, you're into some some, some kinds of sports. So, uh, Amani, when you were growing up, um, who was it that you uh, really looked up to uh, as a professional athlete? Growing up, I really liked, uh, it was two people. I really liked Sean Taylor and I really liked uh, Tyron Matthew. And I know those two are probably a little – in the same ballpark, but a little different styles. Yeah, definitely on the different spectrums of styles. But I, those are just two of the guys that I kind of, I don't know, I, I really liked watching them play. I really liked how they played. So you said uh, Teron Matthew and Sean, Sean Taylor. Taylor. Sean Taylor, mm -hmm. one of my favorites, of course. So, um, yeah, it's a little different, but still there in the secondary. Um, yeah. One of them, a uh, real big hitter. Uh, obviously, in, in Sean Taylor. And then, of course, I um, feel like over time, uh, Teron Matthew got more and more respect. Um, it just kind of as a cerebral guy there in the second yeah. half. So, um, neat. So, um, some cool people to look up to, to maybe aspire to be. Um, so, you only had a little bit of time there uh, at Chicago Tech. And um, I don't know if that might might have gone a little bit into your recruiting but uh, you end up at Nebraska Kearney. Um, how did that work out, man? Yeah, so I was, uh, yeah, I wasn't like super recruited, obviously, you know, not a lot of time 
playing football and my high school is a, a smaller high school. So, you know, not that crazy promoted and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, got my film out there and uh, Nebraska Kearney, they, uh, the coaches there really liked it. And they uh, sent me a, actually one of the coaches came to my school. I remember that he came to my school, uh, came to visit me real fast. It was like a super big thing at the time because it's like nobody like up to that point, nobody like had any coaches come to the school and like ask about them or even like show up and be like, hey, like I'm looking for da da da. So I was actually like, I was in lunch. I was, it was during lunchtime. I was sitting in the lunchroom just eating and like talking to people. And then out of nowhere, like a bunch of my friends came flying through the door and they were like shaking me and like, hey, like, hey, some dude's looking for you. Like he said, he's a coach. Like he's looking for you. Like you gotta go, you gotta go find him now. And I'm just like, face full of food, just like, what? What are you talking about? So, yeah, I remember that. That was fun. So, yeah, we talked, talked to the coaches, set up a a, a visit, uh, took my visit. It was super cold. <laughs> it, was, it was like, I think it was like pretty much the middle of winter or like the start of winter, something like that. And it was super cold there, snow on the ground. Uh, but, yeah, took the visit. Uh, really loved my teammates, love how they were just – you know, talking about the school, talking about like just the relationships, how they, how determined they were about building a team that was not going to be just like a team, but like a family. And that's kind of what brought me into it. And then I, you know, on top of them, the community was great. People around just really embraced me and embraced just the whole culture of just being a family. And that's kind of what drove me to them and what stuck me to them. Yeah. I mean, a little bit of a show, a culture shock. You know, going from Chicago to middle of nowhere, Nebraska. Yeah. Um, and so uh, how did you uh, adjust to that early on? I mean, what made you kind of get into the groove of things? Did it take a year or so or how did that work? Yeah, it took. Yeah, it definitely took me a little bit. I wouldn't say it took me a whole year. I think it took me a couple months just because of. um just because obviously a big culture shock, different, different environment, different, you know, just different way of living, honestly. And, uh, but it was also, it was also something that I was kind of like open to because just because of my nature, like just me as a person, I'm very into like, you know, the quiet scenes of just relaxing and, you know, being somewhere that is very, you know, just a little bit slower than how it is, how it normally is in the city is very, you know, right. a bunch of people loud, moving fast, everything's going fast. It was like the complete opposite. So like I was very open to that. And, you know, obviously my teammates helped me a bunch, like teammates helped me a bunch, coaches helped me a bunch. And, you know, when I got when just having them around and being real comfortable with them, it kind of made me relax more. And then you kind of start seeing this place as your home just as much as like your home home. Right, right. Well, I mean, um obviously there at the at at the beginning, you need to get yourself acclimated go out, buy some more long sleeve shirts, some more coats, whatever it is in order to uh, get yourself comfortable out there. But yeah. <laughs> um, you, know, you get out there, but I mean, I do feel like it did take you a little bit of time to really, you know, have you come into your own uh, there as a player. Um, had a lot of bumps and uh, hurdles that, to get through, uh, but you finally made it and uh, ended, ended on a pretty decent note, I believe. Um, and I feel like, uh, dude, Ar Armani, you you just have a lot of potential, I feel, that's still untapped. Um, and yeah. so that's kind of really what I'm uh, talking to you about is um, you got a lot going for you. So uh, when we look at you as a prospect, as a guy trying to make the professional level, uh, what do you feel sets you apart? Um, I think the biggest thing, obviously, is just like kind of like what you alluded to earlier is like my size for my position. You know, playing DB, it's just I have a I have a, not too many guys are my size and they're moving as well as I feel like I can move, and obviously my wingspan helps me a lot with that. I think those are probably just those two things: my wingspan and my just my general size is what sets me sure. apart for most. People. I mean, definitely uh, sets you apart. Again, um, uh, I have you in my notes about six one, about one ninety five, one you know two hundred pounds. Um, yep. but really long arms. We're talking almost 34 inch arms, uh, 33 and three quarters to be exact. Um, really, uh, really nice. But 
what does that mean we're getting in a player like you? Um, you know, I, I introduced you as a defensive back, but um, what does that mean entirely? Like, are you a corner? Are you a safety? Can you do both? Have you done both? Uh, can you elaborate on your overall experience? So, uh, I mean, I've always been willing to do whatever whatever is needed of me for the team. So if it came down to playing corner, playing safety, playing a nickel type of play, outside linebacker type of deal, I've always been open to all of that. I've had experience uh, early on in my college career playing safety. I got moved to corner uh, for team reasons for team needs I got moved there and then it just it just so happened that I started to you know start blossoming there and, and people really my coaches really liked how I was looking there so I stayed there but I'm I'm not you know I'm obviously not shy you know, or afraid to you know mix it up get back there learn safety or get in the box and be some type of outside linebacker nickel spot I'm free to do all of that I'm willing to do all of it I mean, definitely when coaches get players like you that have the wingspan that you do, um, sometimes they move you around a little bit. So you just kind of have to be ready for it. But yeah. Um, cool. So, yeah, I mean, ultimately your coaches felt like, you know, outside corner, best spot for you, shut your guy down, you know, dominate him and press and throw him out of the game like immediately, you know. <laughs> um, and so um, – like I was saying, I do feel like this past year, you really came into your own, but it really took a while for you to get there. Um, you had a lot of uh, challenges. And so I guess the one question that I have for you is um, you really, uh, I don't know, find out more about a person's character, about how they, you know, deal with adversity. Um, and so I kind of want to ask you about uh, that COVID season, man, that 2020 for you. Um, Talk to me how you were able to um, really get through that and uh, become a better player, become a, be a better man. Yeah. So yeah, COVID season. That was um, yeah, it was a uh, it was definitely a, like a mix of emotions, especially because going into that season, you know, obviously it wasn't like going to be a long crazy season, but it was definitely a season where I felt really good going into it. I felt like I was really going to put my foot you know, put, make my mark and start making a stamp for myself, you know, personally, as well as like team wise. And, you know, we get into the first game, you know, it's very, a uh, little bit of a rivalry game uh, going down there to Pitt State and whatnot. And, you know, we start playing and I'm playing and I feel really good. I feel like I'm playing good. I feel like, you know, really just, you know, not even kind of like in the zone, like, you know, you get into one of those zones and you just like feel like you can't you can't do wrong in those moments. And it's like, yeah, like, and that's kind of where I was at and my head was at. And I was just feeling the game. Like honestly, just 100 percent feeling it. And then um try to go make a play for uh make a play on a ball, uh hyper extend my my leg, kind of tore my uh, tore my ACL, messed up my meniscus and stuff like that. So went down. And that was like my first ever uh like major injury. I've always had, you know nicks and bruises it's football you know people are gonna you're gonna get sore you're gonna be sore you're gonna have little things hurting but I've never had like something major where I'm like yeah you're gonna have to you're gonna be out you're gonna have to do surgery all that stuff so that was my first ever getting hurt like that and it and obviously the initial you know the initial of it happening it shocked me it kind of like you know it took took the wind out of me took took a lot out of me you know and I was, had thoughts running through my head and like you know, is this over? Like, am I not gonna be able to play football anymore? Like, is it, like, is everything I thought I was getting, you know, getting up to working towards is gonna be over with, and I'm just gonna have to find something else to do? You know, all those thoughts immediately rush your head, and um, I just wanna, and I just took a second, and obviously I had teammates around, they're just as devastated as I was, and they showed me tremendous love. The staff, my, um, my, uh, my sport uh trainer staff and stuff like that they showed me tremendous love and support and they just you know supported me through all of that and then you know we get done with that so I didn't have this it took the surgery and then obviously the biggest part of PT you know physical physical training right. going back to that, just getting back to a baseline because now you're you're behind what you normally were and now you got to work back to that line just to get further ahead so I think 
going through that COVID season, it was a lot of emotion. It was a lot of like, um, how well are you, how well can you deal with adversity when you felt like you could do no wrong, you know? Cause then, you know, coming into that season, I felt great. Felt like I was going to do this and do that. And then have, having that injury happen and, you know, having that huge setback to where it was like, okay, like there's nothing else to do but go up. Like you either just quit or you just, or you find a way to work through it. And it, trust me, it's not, it, it's never an easy thing to do. And there was plenty of times where I was like sitting there questioning whether or not like, man, is this, is this really going to be like forever? Like, is this how, how long is this going to take? But I had, like I said, I had uh, people around me who supported me, who who pushed me, even when it was like days that I didn't feel like I wanted to be pushed. It was more like I need to be pushed, and then you know pushing myself mentally on those on those tough PT days where it's you know you're sore and you know you don't want to do some of the exercises or you just feel like you want to take a day off and and it's just something about it like I don't know. I think the the struggle in doing it really helped me build myself up from that point on because from that point on I felt like nothing was really as bad as that like if that makes sense like no. I could really just attack anything else that came in front of me after that right I, I completely get that I mean obviously devastating to go down but like you said uh I had a lot of great staff and teammates around you to help uh really get you better uh, which obviously you did. Uh, you did come back from all that. And um, uh, let's focus now on uh, some of the good memories because maybe perhaps that wasn't a great memory. So uh, give us one of your best moments. Uh, give me, talk me through maybe one of your best highlights uh, as a player out there, maybe perhaps this past season. This past season, best highlight, best highlight. Dang, I don't know. I, I, I kind of enjoy every. Every second I'm out there, I kind of just enjoy it. I think that one of the best would probably be uh, senior night. Uh, yeah, senior night, uh, we were at home. We were playing Lincoln. Yeah, Lincoln University. And yeah, that was just one of those games. It was like weird weather because it was like supposed to be nice. And then we get out there, it was raining. <laughs> and it was, it was raining, then it stopped raining. And then it kind of looked like it was starting to snow a little bit. Like it was crazy. You know, Nebraska weather. But, um, no, that definitely was a – I think that was probably a memory, a fun memory, just because of how I was playing. It was one of those times, once again, where I was just – I felt like I was in the zone. I just felt like I was just moving off instinct. I was just going and, and making plays and just having fun and just having, like, like – it's just one of those backyard football moments where it's like you're just having pure fun playing the game enjoying my teammates, enjoying how I'm playing, enjoying the game itself. You know, I got, yeah, had a bunch of pass breakups that game, uh, had an interception. You know, it was just playing. I was just playing. Yeah, I was just feeling good, just playing. And and definitely was a, um, a lot of other stuff during that day that made me feel good. You know, I was trying to just dedicate that game to one of my, uh, one of my former friends who passed away. Uh, one of my former teammates who passed away, I was trying to just dedicate that game to them and just have the uh, most fun playing. And it really, it felt like that. It felt like they were watching me. It felt like they were there. Cool. I mean, definitely, I feel like you, you ended on a good note there with your school and um, came out uh, of this past season, all-conference athlete, um, solidifying yourself as a really interesting corner. Um, you know, that you've been able to go out there and, 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 and get the job done. So uh, you finish up there. And um, uh, recently you had an opportunity to participate in the uh, National Combine where you were able to really showcase the fact that um, dude, you're probably one of the best athletes out there. Um, and so I kind of want to see, uh, you know, get your opinion perhaps on, um, you know, how that uh, experience was for you. and um, if you got any more in the tank for you in a pro day here soon. Uh, yeah, that experience was, it was really exciting. I was like truly blessed and honored to even get the invitation to be able to go there. Um, never, never really truly been in Indiana. So it was like a, you know, another road trip on the road, finding somewhere new to be, 
and just the overall that that staff, the coaches there, you know, the hotel that we stayed in, it was all really great and it was set up for us to be, you know, a really good experience and just also another experience to not only learn stuff, you know, from different coaches, different players, different, you know, people around, but also just, you know, display what you what you've been working on, what you've been, you know, you know, your talents, what you've been working on skill wise, you know, learning new things so you can add that to your your own toolbox, uh, in a way of saying. But um, yeah, it was fun. I, I really enjoyed like going down there and having the opportunity to just showcase myself as best as I possibly could. And yes, I, I do got more in the tank. I'm hoping to do some more things for uh, pro days and, you know, improve on some things and, and try to show that, you know, it's, I, I haven't reached my ceiling at all. I don't feel like I have. Well, I mean, definitely showcased the fact that uh, you're a good athlete. Um, you, you showed a bit of explosion out there in some of those drills, which is good. Uh, solid broad jump, uh, you know, good L drill uh, number there as well uh, for a guy who, like I said, man, I feel like you've got a ton of potential that has yet to even be tapped, which I think would uh, would be interesting. So you, you have a, a, a pro day coming up, uh, what, like at the end of this month or something like that? Yeah, like, yeah, close to the end of this month, mid-month. Yeah, I have a pro day in uh, Lincoln. We'll go do that and then be right back to training right after that. Cool. Well, um, uh, I do want to kind of wrap up our time, man. This has been a, a, a long yet a very interesting uh, interview. Uh, you, you know, you have a very interesting story. I mean, you have a guy who – has been to Chicago, uh, obviously grew up there, um, played his uh, collegiate ball there in Nebraska, and then, yes. uh, you know, bounced around a little bit. But uh, here's hoping that the world will get even more, even bigger for you uh, as yes. these uh, weeks unfold. So um, as we close up our time, I want to give you an opportunity to talk to all those scouts out there who maybe have yet to hear your name. Um, who you really think need to give you that opportunity at the next level. So uh, give them your pitch and close us out. Uh, I'm not much for the talking. You're just going to get a hard-nosed football guy. You're going to get a guy that's willing to do what needs to be done for the team, whether it's special teams, whether it's playing different positions, whether it's whatever. Yeah, I'm just a guy who just truly loves the game for the game. And that's all. That's all I can give you. I can give you a a bunch of rah-rah stuff, but I'm just here to, you know, butt heads and win games. So whatever team wants that kind of guy, that's uh, that's me. You've definitely proved uh, some grittiness, some, uh, you know, the fact that you're a hard worker, that you're able to overcome adversity and really uh, shine uh, after all of that. Um, and um, we've highlighted a lot of great things about you, man. Your size is uh, elite. Uh, when we're talking about your wingspan. So um, yeah. I don't know how a team wants to use that, whether they want to keep you at corner or safety or whatever, but I mean, it does off to offer potential at, at both of those spots. But um, yeah. um, Amani, this has been great. And I want to wish you very best of luck at your pro day here soon. And um, you take care, all right? Thank you so much. All right. Once again, we have uh, Armani Webster, defensive back in Nebraska County. Uh, check him out. <laughs>